Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. Kill us. Don't send text messages. That's for weak people. We died long time ago. You can't threaten me with death. The true church is about to emerge. And the great divide will be wider. It, it, you will know the sorcerers in a short while because of the breezing black brightness of the light of God that will come from his true witnesses. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Acts chapter 8 from verse 14. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid there their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Now, Please follow what Peter said. Number one, thy money perish with thee. Why? Because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. There's a preacher on the pulpit, he boasted that he took a certain amount to a certain preacher and received his anointing. <laughs> and people will say, Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. That was what earned this money cost. Thy money perish with thee. Because what? Thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Number two, go on. Can you see the second statement? He said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. It means, you are not born again. You cannot mingle among us. You have no part. And it is the spirit of God that drew that war. You can't mix because we are separated. We cannot talk about unity until we talk about the issue of separation. If you are separated unto God and I'm separated unto God, you, we don't need to preach unity we will blend because our values are one. Our pursuits are one. Our desires are one. The reason why we've been trying to do, you, you know, how many of you were part of student union when you were on campus? Union is not unity. The moment the object of our separation is one, then uni unity is possible. Unity is possible. Unity is possible. There's a certain place that I don't, I decided, not God, oh, me, I decided that I would not preach here because of several things that happened. So a preacher came and invited me from there. In my heart, it was already known. But I said I should ask God. And God approved. And I was wondering why God did not honor my, my desire not to preach. Until I now went for the invitation. And I saw that we had the same God. And that he had gone to our God and asked him, bring that man. Even though I did not want to go, I found myself there. And I found a brother. A 
brother basking in the fires of God. Are you there? So it was no longer about my own human persuasion. My position was overruled because it was in touch with the God of our fathers. You don't, you don't need to preach unity. If we are separated unto the same God, we will find alignment. When you begin to hear people say, you know, believers, we don't love ourselves. This, <laughs> calm down. Don't, go, if, go and look for your glasses and put it on and watch him. He's trying to push for ecumenism because he's standing on foreign ground. Standing on strange ground. The man says, you have no part in this matter. There is no portion of our allotment that falls to you. You are a stranger to this economy. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This is the first time I've seen a man that was able to detect a man's heart. Because in the Old Testament, it was, he said, men look on the outward, but God looks on the... This man picked his heart. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You are not yet born again, but you'll be masquerading. An evangelist, Philip, had baptized this man. He had baptized him. The man was already gone in to become assistant pastor in the move. Because Satan wanted to orchestrate an occasion of a mixed multitude in that revival. And then the apostles came. You have no part in this matter. Is there someone that is making you comfortable with compromise? Is there someone that is making you no longer care about your life of fornication? Is there someone that is making you feel that, okay, you know, I was at the airport, which day was that? Was When were we, were we at the airport? So somebody confronted me with scriptures. And he said, are we really Christians or we are saints? I knew where he was going. Because in falling Christianity, what we present to the people is the structure, the internal structure. How that it is possible for you to be born again and it's a reality that your heart bears witness to and there's no evidence outside. Meanwhile, your spirit became recreated and the evidence to prove that your spirit is regenerated is that they are fruit of the regenerated human spirit which are evident to see huh? when you got baptized in the holy spirit the initial evidence of being baptized in the holy ghost was that you spoke in tongues there was something external and the ultimate evidence is that you have the capacity to walk with the holy ghost be led by the Holy Ghost and become a creature that manifests everything that is in the will of God. Are you there? There was nothing that God did that there was no external dimension to it. So if you say, if you say that the, the unbelievers were the guys that called us Christians, so we are not Christians. What we are are saints because that's the position that we attain by new birth. It means that you are accepting that a coin has only one side. You are accepting that you can clap with one hand. Because those things you ask are two sides of the same coin. It's the front and the back end. If I'm born again, there should be a manifestation. If I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, there should be what? A manifestation. And if you study your Bible, you find out that one of the qualifications for eldership is that an elder should have a good report even among all believers. And it's the unbelievers that gave us the name Christian. And what it means in Greek is little Christ. They were manifesting Christ. They were from different languages, different tribes. But there was one thing that was a common denominator among them. The life of Christ was revealed through their vessel. It was an observation testimony. 
By the time we finished the theology, there, were, there was no question. Because there's a campaign to begin. Half truth is not truth, it's deception. It's holding the truth in unrighteousness. What is the name of your God? Some people went somewhere for healing and they had to take water and drink the water and then there's one, one altar there, they will bow down before it, bow down, you will not wear shoes. I, what, what did you just do? Bowing down before an altar, an image? The devil has done over time on your case. Receive grace to stand in your conviction, even if it's not popular. When you find a preacher whose message does not divide, you know, if I begin to preach about Jesus, Anyone serving Satan will know that I've exposed him. Are you following? Yes, if your message does not divide, it, it's pampas Satanists, in pampas Christians, pampas thieves, pampas fornicators. You see, you know, it's balanced teaching. We are in the middle, you know, so that everybody will, you, you are not a follower of Jesus Christ. You are a man pleaser. I hope you have seen it in the Bible that if I'm a man pleaser, I cannot be in the service of God. God will make you different. Amen. He will not make you popular. He will make you different. Amen. What it means to be holy is that you are different. Wait, listen, listen, listen. If we go to the market and we buy 10 cups and we take five cups to the temple, the same cups, we say, these ones, we have brought them for God. Then we now take five, the rest of the five, take them home. If the priest comes and anoints those cups, from the day the anointing came on the cups, the cups can no longer be used for any human thing. It's only good for use in the service of God. So these cups are called holy cups. The same cups, the ones you use to give people water, give your baby water, you used to pour water into the, the, the radiator of your car. Those cups that have been dedicated to God cannot be used for mundane purposes. Those ones now only have use in the service of God. So those cups, even though they look alike, they are different. Holiness will make you different. The way normal common people that fornicate in the market are, you will be different. The way normal people do business, that's not how you will do business. You will be different. The way normal everyday pastors do ministry, that's not how you will be. You will be different. If it is not evident that you are different, what you have sold for, what you have bought is called ecumenism. You want to be in the center so that politically you look right, you look correct. You look like the one that is trying to bring everybody together. But what you are doing is idolatry. When God descends in the land, it is such as you that he will destroy first. That compromise, when God comes, he will destroy you first. Because you are the very image of, of compromise. Are you there? Forgive me, I'm not called to preach to you babes. I bear a rod from God. This is the same message I preach to kings. I, it doesn't change. If you cast me away, I have transport to go back home. So when I go, I... I take komina lai koboro sik. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, Grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now.